Hello, welcome everyone. And this week our topic is colonization in the 1600s. This week we finally get to talk about those English or British colonies that we think of as the very beginning of United States history. Now, the very first English colony here was actually a place called Roanoke. It was in Virginia and it was a horrible failure. Um, in fact, all of the people who settled in Roanoke eventually disappeared. So, something to think about there. The first permanent English settlement was in Jamestown, Virginia. And Jamestown was a disaster at first. They had a very, very hard time figuring out what to do and how to survive. So, do yourself a favor and look in the textbook for that in Chapter 3. It will take you through all of the struggles that they had. Now, eventually, the thing that saves Roanoke, excuse me, the thing that saves Virginia is tobacco. They realized that tobacco grows there very well and very easily, and tobacco was one of those things from the New World that the Europeans really liked and that they could sell for a profit. And once they realized that tobacco was very profitable and easy to grow, relatively easy to grow in Virginia, they went with it and that is what made Jamestown successful. Now it's also that concentration on tobacco and agriculture that makes the idea of indentured servants very popular in Jamestown. And indentured servants are people who willingly come over to Jamestown or to Virginia and they realize that they will be working there for the next few years. Um, the plantation owner pays for the indentured servants ticket over to the New World and in exchange the indentured servant works for that plantation owner for a few years. Now that system works pretty well um, up until you get close to about 1700 in Virginia and after that they start turning towards slavery. They realized that slavery in the long run was cheaper and that the slaves were less of an issue than the indentured servants were. Um, see the textbook, see the PowerPoint on Bacon's Rebellion um, and you'll see what trouble indentured servants can whip up in Virginia. The second really successful colony in the New World for the British was Plymouth in Massachusetts. And Plymouth was completely different than Jamestown in a lot of ways. Plymouth, as you may remember or may know, was settled by by people who were looking to get religious freedom. They felt very persecuted in England because of their religious beliefs and so they decided that they would leave and start their own colony. That means, number one, the people are different. It's more families. Um, they, at least at the very beginning, are not as much out to make a profit as the people in Jamestown were. They were more just wanting to settle and figure out their lives here in the New World. Obviously, Virginia is different than Massachusetts in terms of environment and climate. So they had, you know, harsher winters, but an easier time because disease did not spread as easily or as well. So again, it's something just to keep in mind. They were two very different places. And because of that, if you ask me, it kind of sets the tone for the northern and the middle colonies go one way and the southern colonies go another. The southern colonies end up more like Virginia, focusing on tobacco and agriculture or cotton. And eventually the northern colonies are going to go the way of agriculture, but also the way of uh, merchants and business and shipping and trading and, and things like that. So they kind of go off in two different directions, the northern colonies and the southern colonies. Now, just keep in mind that eventually there are 13 different colonies that the British set up in what is currently the United States. And each one is started on its own. Each colony considers itself its own little country. Each colony has its own laws, its own 
ways of doing things. So keep that in mind. And it is remarkable to me that at some point in the 1700s, they do come together and see themselves as one country. But that is another story for another day. Okay, Have a look in the textbook and you can see the different colonies, Massachusetts, Plymouth, and the rest of the 13, how they got started. They all have individual stories, which I think is very cool. Okay. Have a good week.